Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can set up your Python development environment in your Visual Studio Code Editor on Mac operating system. So the prerequisite of setting up the Python environment on Visual Studio Code is obviously you should have the Python installed on your Mac operating system. So if you don't have the Python installed, you should install it. If you don't know how to install Python on Mac, I have already created a video about it. And the second requirement is you should have Visual Studio Code installed. So I'm assuming you have already installed the Visual Studio Code editor. If you haven't, and if you don't know how to set up Visual Studio Code on Mac, I have also created the video about it. Now, once you have Python and Visual Studio Code installed, let's start with the setting up of Python on Visual Studio Code. So we are going to start with the terminal. So I'm going to open the spotlight and here I'm going to search for the terminal. And then let's say I want to create a Python project in some directory on my Mac operating system. So I have all these directories and I want to create the Python project in my documents folder. So I'm going to CD into my documents folder and here I'm going to create one more directory and I'm going to name it as sample. So to create a directory, you can uh, give this command, which is mkdir and the name of the directory, which is sample, right? And when I press enter, it's going to create this sample directory. You can see this directory is created. Now I'm going to cd into uh, this uh, sample directory. So let me cd into the sample directory. And here I can type code space dot and then press enter which is going to open the sample directory in visual studio code now this is the command line way of opening the sample directory in your visual studio code if you don't want to do this the other way is simple you just open your visual studio code and then click on open here and then just navigate to the folder where your uh, python project is there or where you want to create your python projects just select any folder where you want to save your python files and then click on open and it's also going to open the folder in which you want to create your python project now here to create a python script i can click on uh, this uh, plus button which says new file or i can click on file and then click on new file option so let's click on the new file option and then I'm going to name my file as let's say test.py file and then press enter. As soon as I create a test.py file, Visual Studio Code is going to recognize that I want to create a Python script and it gives me this kind of pop-up which says do you want to install recommended Python extension from Microsoft for the Python language. So Visual Studio Code provides different kind of extensions for different kind of programming languages. You can directly click on the install button, which is going to install the extension. Or what you can do is you can uh, click on the extensions section here and then search for Python here. When you search for Python, you will see the most popular extension here is for Python, which is from Microsoft itself and it has been downloaded around 106 million times. So it's the most popular and the official extension for Python on Visual Studio Code. We are going to click on uh, this install button here, which is going to install this extension on Visual Studio Code. So just wait for a few seconds. And in some time, this uh, Python extension will be installed. Once the Python extension is installed, you will see the disable button or the uninstall button. So if you want to uh, disable the Python extension, just click on disable. If you want to uninstall this extension totally, you can press on the uninstall button. Let me close this window and then close this welcome window also. And you can see you also have other popular Python extensions like Python indent, Python extension pack, from the other developers and you can see all these python extensions so if you want you can install these extensions later 
so let me close this and then go to the explorer section here now in this uh, python file let me just copy and paste a very simple python script so what uh, this script does is we have uh, defined two variables num1 and num2 and we have assigned the value of 5 and 10 to both both of them and then we are just adding these two uh, variables and assigning it to the third variable which is called sum result and we are printing the value of uh, the num1 num2 and the sum result here so this is a very simple python script once you uh, write your python script in the python file to run your python script you have few options one is the obvious one which is this one where you will see this uh, run button for your python file when you click on this drop down menu you have other options like uh, run python file in dedicated terminal and debug python file so you can run your python file you can run your python uh, file in a dedicated terminal or you can just debug your python script using this option similar kind of option you will find here when you click on run here you can uh, start the debugging of your python script you can run your python script without debugging and all the other options are available here if you right click on your python script you can also see other options to run your python script for example when you hover over the run python button you have the option to uh, run the python in the terminal and run the python in the uh, python terminal also you will see the python interpreter at the bottom so here at the bottom of your visual studio code editor you can see if you have installed python then you will see which kind of interpreter you can use for your python script so so i have installed this python 3.12.1 and visual studio recognizes this python path and it shows me this uh, python path here at the bottom now if you have installed multiple versions of python for example you have uh, anaconda version of python or you have different versions of python you can choose between those versions using this selection so you can see i have 3.9.6 version and i have 3.12.1 version so i can use either one of them and whenever i choose a different version i will be able to see the version right so you can switch those python versions using the switch here also when you press command shift p on your visual studio code it's going to open this kind of palette and here when you type python you will be able to see different kind of uh, commands so you can see create terminal create environment configure tests launch tensor board so all these options are available for running your python scripts right so these are some of the options you can use later now if you want to open a new terminal you can click on this terminal option and then click on new terminal and it's going to open a new terminal here on mac os if you are using the newest version of mac the default terminal is zsh but if you want to open separate terminal let's say bash or uh, the javascript debug terminal you will be able to see different type of terminal which are supported by your mac operating system here so let's say i want to open the bash terminal i can click on bash here if i want to open a zsh terminal i can click on zsh here and all the terminals i can switch between those terminals using this uh, menu here right now let's run our code so i'm going to just click on this run button which is going to run our script and it's going to print the value of uh, the numbers you can see the output is printed here which is the sum of 5 and 10 is 15 which is printed using this print line now if you want to debug your code you can set the breakpoint at different uh, lines so i'm going to set the breakpoint at line number 2 line number 5 line number 8 and let's say line number 11 so if i want to debug my code i can either click on this arrow here and then i can click on this option which says debug python file or i can press on uh, the run button and then i'm i can just click on uh, the start debugging button so i'm going to click on start debugging and then i can choose 
the debugger in my case. So you can see I have different kind of debuggers here, Python file, module, remote attach, all these kind of uh, options. I'm going to choose the first one, which is Python file, because I want to debug the Python file. Once I click on the debug option, you will be able to see that my interface for Visual Studio Code changes and my um, highlighted area here is now this debug section, right? Here on the top, you will see different buttons for uh, continue, step over, step into, step out, and I can restart the debugging and I can stop the debugging using this red button. Now, when I start the debugging, my program execution stops at the first breakpoint. Also, I can see the list of all the breakpoints here. So you can see on line number two, line number five, eight and 11, I have the breakpoint. I can toggle all these breakpoints by clicking on the toggle active breakpoints, which is going to toggle all the breakpoints. Once again, when I click on toggle, it's going to enable the breakpoints. I can also disable those breakpoints from here or directly in the file itself. Now, when I click on uh, step over, my program execution stops at the second breakpoint and you can see the assignment is done for number one. So I can see num1 is assigned the value of five, but still we are on the line number five. So the execution on this line haven't uh, happened. So I don't see the num2 is equal to 10. So when I step over once again, you will see num2 is assigned the value of 10. I can also see the global uh, variables right now. So you can see all the global variables here. I can also see the special variables, which are some internal uh, variables in Python script. If I press on continue, then my program execution will stop at the next uh, breakpoint. Here, now I can see the sum result is equal to 15. So you will be able to see all the uh, breakpoint value and the uh, variable values in the variables section also. If you want to stop the debugging, just click on this stop debugging or if you want to start, just click on the restart. So let me click on the restart and the debugging will start from the starting point of the breakpoint, right? I can close the debugging like this also. Now, if you want to create a launch.json file for your debugging, so right now, my debugging uh, is done by the Visual Studio Code, but let's say if you want to share this debugging environment with some other developer, and if you are using the version control, then you can commit this launch.json file, and then other developer can pull the Git uh, repository and then use the same configuration. So if I click on create a launch.json file, it's going to create a launch.json file select Python file here. And once I click on launch.json file, you can see there is a folder which is .vs code, which is created for me. And then I have the launch.json file where the configuration related to my debugging is there and it can be used later by the other developers once I push my changes to a Git repository. Now let's say you want to create a script which have some kind of external Python package dependency. Let's see how we can uh, run that also. So let me just create one more script here. So let me click on uh, new file and then I'm going to uh, just type test to dot py file. Okay. And here I'm going to just uh, write a very simple code which uses an external package, which is called bcrypt. Okay, so this is an external package. And when you hover over bcrypt, it says import bcrypt could not be resolved because we need to install the bcrypt package using pip. Then only this script will run properly, right? So let me open a new uh, terminal here. So when I type Python 3 space, the name of the file, which is test, py and then run this uh, script is going to complain that this import is not 
available. So how we can solve this problem? So let me clear the terminal. And then first of all, let's create a virtual env for our project. To create the virtual env, just write Python 3 space hyphen m venv and then the name of your environment. Let's uh, name it uh, env itself and then I'm going to press enter. Now once my virtual environment is created, I can also see this directory here with the name env and then I have this bin directory and I have this activate file here. So to activate my virtual environment, I can give this command on Mac OS, which is source and then the name of your env directory, which is env in my case. Then I have this bin, so forward slash bin, forward slash activate. So basically I need to call this script to activate my virtual env. So write source space uh, this command and most probably you will also require the sudo command. Right, so just write sudo space source space n forward slash uh, bin forward slash activate and then, then press enter. It says uh, sudo source command not found. Let's try the source command without sudo and then press enter. And you can see the environment is activated. So sudo is not required. I was uh, expecting that it might fail due to the permissions, but uh, sudo is not required. So just run this uh, command without sudo. And, and once your virtual env is activated, you will see this env in front of your command line. Okay, this means that your virtual environment is activated. Now all this creation and activation of virtual environment we have uh, done so that we can install the bcrypt uh, package for this environment and I don't want it to uh, install bcrypt globally, right? So to install the bcrypt package, just, just write pip command. On your Mac OS, most probably if you have installed Python 3, then the command name for pip will be pip3. So just try pip or pip3 here, whatever works for you, then install and then the name of the package which is bcrypt in my case okay when i press enter it's going to install this bcrypt pip package and, and once this package is installed you can see this squiggly line on top of uh, this bcrypt package is gone and you can see the installation is also successful now i can just run my uh, script let me clear the terminal and then i can run the script by using python 3 and the name of the file which is test2.py and then press enter and it's going to run my script which have the external pip package so i have already installed the package and it shows me the output here so this is how you can create the virtual environment also on your mac operating system using visual studio code also once i'm done with the virtual environment i can also disable it by giving this command which is deactivate and then press enter and i'm out of my virtual environment right so i think that's it for this video this is how you can set up the python development environment with your visual studio code editor on your mac operating system i hope you've enjoyed this video and i will see you in the next video